Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram as Megan underscore Babauta underscore on Ravelry as Mama Made VM. And you can email me at the Seattle Stitcher at gmail.com. I did create a Goodreads account, so I'll link that below. It's just my first and last name, Megan Babauta, so you can find me there as well if you're interested in any of my book content. So, as I say, you are all very welcome here. So I'm going to hop right in and start with my starts as I do. And if you guys watched my last Fostube video, then you'll know that Cam the Stitcher, amazing channel. If you haven't watched it, definitely go check her out. But Cameron and I decided to go ahead and start a sow. So this is Winter Moth Sow. That is what we've hashtagged it. And this is White Winter Moth by Kathy Barrick. Here's the pattern. I really love this one. It's so pretty and just so fun. It's one of the newer, it's a 2022 Expo release. And I'm stitching mine one over two on a 36 count B Stitch Me Honey. And I'm using the DMC conversion. So here's the DMC, love this. I did kit it up um, with you guys on video. So that is a live that you can go back and watch on my channel. It was super fun to just chat with you guys while I put all those on the floss drops. I have this on a Morgan hoop because I actually brought it to work yesterday and stitched on it a little bit when I had some time, but here is my progress. So I'm really enjoying this one. I just, I like the fabric. It's super fun. And I like the way it's looking. This one, whew, tale of woe though, let me tell you. So it's kind of funny because we decided to start this on Friday the 13th. It was the first Friday the 13th of 2023. And let me tell you, I had so many problems. I actually, if you look here, there's some stitching up here because I started in the upper right hand corner, which I usually do, um, miscounted, restarted in the center start, miscounted again, restarted, miscounted again, restarted. That's where I got to this one. I've already miscounted this motif twice and I had to rip out all of these motifs because I had counted off of this one. So she's been, uh, she's been through it. <laughs> I honestly wanted to put this on timeout. I wasn't even going to bring it to work with me yesterday because I was getting really frustrated, <laughs> but I decided I wanted to get a little bit more of this fill in done. Um, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the outline in and slowly fill in as I go. Because as long as I get that outline correct and my counting is good on the outline, I feel like I'll be fine, you know? And I do really love this project. I thought it would be fun to start in the middle as well, just because it's such a big motif in the middle. And I'm not typically a middle starter. Um, this needle minder that I have here, it just says the stitcher on it. That is a needle minder from Ginger Stitches and they are a website that isn't accessible for us buyers unless you buy off of the amazon storefront so i did buy that off of the amazon storefront and it's super cute uh it just says it's like a tarot card it says the stitcher and it's a little hand stitching so i really liked that but yeah i, I like this i have it in a seven inch morgan hoop for anyone who is interested and i'm really enjoying it so this one's been fun it's just been a headache because of all of my own miscounting errors and, and as well, when I just had the outline of the B5200 on my fabric, I was like, shoot, that is not showing up well enough. I need to restart it with a different fabric. I was really getting, <laughs> really getting worried, but it ended up turning out okay. And I'm happy with it now. So I'm gonna keep that one up. Uh, the next one I started was actually like a surprise start for me. This isn't a me made bag. This is actually a bag I sewed within the past two weeks of talking to you guys. So I sewed up this bag and decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and start the project because I wanted to see how I liked my, my DMC choice. So I started this project, which is Holiday Rooster. I'll put a picture of it up here. This is a hemlock and rye pattern. Um, I, I think it's called Gum Road. I think that's what it's called is the place where you can purchase a pattern, but it's a hemlock row pattern, hemlock and rye pattern. And it's by Julie, which is the um, Kansas city girl in a Colorado world. And I went ahead and just hopped in and started it because I really, like I said, wanted to see how my colors played off of each other. I was hoping to get a little bit more of this done last night because I really only stitched for like 45 minutes, but I put in one row of stitching and then I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. <laughs> 
So here is my very measly start. As you can see, this is actually how I count down on my fabric. I wanted to leave a really big margin on this one. So it's a good three to four inches, I wanna say on each side. But I mark it by using these little bulb stitch markers, which are pretty common in the knitting community, but they're very affordable. You can buy them in bulk on Amazon, places like that, Etsy, all that good stuff. So I just measure over and down, put a little marker in, and then I start from there. Usually I just take the marker right off, but I haven't yet for this one. And this one I am stitching on Antique White Lugana. It's a 28 count. Um, I just have a huge piece of this because I had planned to start a different project on it when I very first started stitching, but it ended up that the piece was not quite large enough, which is totally fine. I am probably not going to fill up very much of this. This the stitch is large, but it's not this large, you know? <laughs> um, this is a, an even weave though. And I'm gonna say it, I don't think even weaves are my favorite. I don't know what it is about stitching on it. It's just not my favorite process. So I, I like the project. Um, I'm gonna finish it because I'm determined to get this one finished, but I don't think that I don't think that I'm going to pick up this fabric again anytime soon. And the colors that I chose for this one, because I was essentially just trying to match this fabric because I was trying to go for this porcelain look, um, the two shades of DMC that I ended up going with are 820 and 809. If you guys are curious, I do feel like this worked out perfectly. I got a couple of comments in my last video that this reminded people of Delft blue. I believe that is how you pronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong though, please. And that is a ceramic like pottery version of the porcelain version. So they are exactly that. That's the spot on the look that I'm going for. I just love this. It's so pretty. So yeah, super excited about this. Um, this one is called Holiday Roosters. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I might swap out the roosters for the cats. I haven't decided. She actually provides you with a like conversion so that you can swap them, the roosters and the cats. But yeah, I don't know, something about it. Maybe it's like that floral pattern that goes around the border. Um, it just reminded me of this kind of, this kind of porcelain. I'm sure there's a specific name for this kind of porcelain. I don't know if it's Dutch porcelain or what. I'll have to put it on the screen. <laughs> but that one was my next start. And my last start, because I was just like out of control, guys, I was out of control. <laughs> it is in a bag that my husband gifted me for Christmas. This is Resting Stitch Face. And again, for some reason, every time I see this, it reminds me of Abby, the top knot stitcher. <laughs> Even though I know that my husband's intent was like, that looks like me because my bangs and my dark hair, but um, I don't know. She's just synonymous with the bangs, okay? So this is on a dyed by me 28 count. Uh, I wanna, this is like a DMC Monaco or something like that. And I'll put the pattern here because I don't actually remember the title of it, but I wanted to start this for just because I, I just felt like it. I wanted to start a small and I wanted something to stitch on in February. So I was like, I'll just get it started now and I'll really focus on it in February. Um, I chose DMC 915 and here is my progress on this one. So like I said, this fabric is dyed by me. I'm super happy with how this turned out. I'm just gonna stand up so I can get a little bit closer. And I'm liking the combination. So the color of the year is supposed to be magenta, right? So I decided to just go all in and start a project in magenta. I have a ton of this floss because I picked up a bunch to stitch a monochromatic sampler in it. And I think I still will do that at some point because I really love this color. I've always been a fan of magenta and um, I really liked how it looked with this fabric. And my apologies for the needle minder. When I purchased this, I thought it was a haunted house. I see now that it is a, like a wizard's wand shop. I don't wanna just throw it away though, cause it was pretty pricey. <laughs> and I only have so many needle minders. So I, I do have this one on this project, but I hope that I have not um, given anyone ill intent by using this, um, like, I know it's supposed to be like a Harry Potter themed. I'm pretty sure. Does that look like Harry Potter does it to anyone? It didn't to me. I really thought it was a haunted house, but um, it's a wizard like shop. And I'm assuming that's supposed to be Harry Potter. Although no, no money went to the Harry Potter franchise. I just, I still want to do apologize for it. So anyways, 
yeah, love this. Isn't that cute? I'm super excited with my dye job on this too. I'm not gonna lie, pat myself on the back there. This was my second attempt at dyeing fabric. Um, my first attempt was actually on a whip that I'm, I worked on in the past two weeks. So you'll see that as well. So that's a fun one. I just have it in this little bag since it's a PDF pattern. Unfortunately, the pattern is not for sale any longer. Um, one of my girlfriends, she is the designer for it. Hope you don't mind that I call you that girl, but <laughs> she um, had messaged me and I was like, I think I posted my story on Instagram saying I wanted to start like a Valentine's Day small. And she was like, I have the perfect one. I designed it like a year or so ago and she sent me the PDF for free. So that was just super sweet. And I, I just, I had to start it right away, of course. <laughs> so those were all my starts for the past two weeks. Now I'm gonna move on to my whips. So my next whip is actually a sal as well. And this is the Beatrix Potter sal. And I recently learned from Bridgen that Beatrix Potter did not stitch this for some reason because it was in the museum with her, like her name on it and everything. I was under the impression that it was stitched by her or someone in her heritage line, um, but apparently not so. <laughs> so I'll put a picture of the pattern here. This is a stitchy box pattern. You can buy the PDF. You can also purchase a paper copy of it. I went ahead and just got the PDF and I printed it myself at home. I'm stitching it on a 36 count Duxbury. I wanna say it's Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit. And I'm stitching it one over two with Dinky Dyes Fireside. I'm just gonna stand up so I can get nice and close. I know I said it last time I pulled this one out, which I think was actually just last week, but Dinky Dyes are my favorite floss I've ever used, for sure. There's absolutely nothing better than them, and I am 100% sure of it. <laughs> I just, this, like, the way the stitches look, I don't know if it's the linen or if it's a mix of the Dinky Dyes and the linen, but the way the stitches look is magnificent. I love it. I've been trying to pull it out every like few days to get a little bit of stitching on it. Oh, I can't wait for this one to be done. It's just so beautiful. There is a large motif pretty soon in this area, I want to say, and it has a very sparse floral motif in it. I'm debating swapping that out for a one over one stitched quote. I don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Usually I don't have all my stuff on hoops, but I've actually been stitching on like everything. Last night, I just so sporadic, like picked up this, put a few stitches in, picked up this, put a few <laughs> stitches in. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this just to be on the safe side. And this is a Mad Reminders Needle Minder. Uh, you guys know I love her needle minders. They're absolutely amazing. Oh, I just love this project. There's absolutely nothing better than these dinky dyes. I'm telling you. And here's the dinky dyes floss. Oh. It's beautiful. It's just so nice to stitch with. I've been really enjoying it. I've never had such a pleasurable stitching experience and I definitely want to pick up some dinky dyes to stitch another monochromatic sampler in. So my next whip, this is in a me made bag and it has the purple lining. This is, I forget the name of it. I think Suffrage Act is the name and it's my Little House Needleworks pattern. So I've been stitching on this one for a while. I actually stitched on this when I was doing my 12 by 12, but I left it at work because <laughs> I am a dork and I forgot it. So I went ahead and I remembered to grab it off of the shelf at work and I did get a little bit more stitching done on this one. So here are my flosses. I think that everything left in here is the called for. I have been when I'm finished, like I know that I don't have anything left of that color. I've been hanging my flosses back up in my storage area and I'm stitching this one over two on a 32 count. I actually forgot which linen. I, I know it's a picture of this plus linen, so I'll put the name of it on the screen, but I'm stitching it one over two on the picture of this plus and this is how far I got. So, with this one, um, I honestly don't remember where I was last. Gosh, where was I last? <laughs> I think that I didn't have any of this done. So I did go in and I completed the bunting. I believe that's what this little stuff is called. I did swap out my colors on the bunting to be the Suffrage Act colors, like the American Suffrage Act, which is the purple, gold, and white. And I think that I completed her dress since last time, uh, maybe a couple of the bricks. And then I came over here and started, I think it's like a potted 
plant or something like that. So yeah, that's my progress on her. I really love this linen. This is fawn if I picture this plus. Yeah, this is fawn. I'm sure of it because you guys, if you've watched my channel before, know I love fawn. It's amazing. Oh, it's so cute. It's just going to be such a cute little small. Um, I feel like I should have given myself a little bit more room here for <laughs> framing, but I'm hoping I can find a pretty tight frame. I might just have to get this one custom framed because it might be a weird size. I just really like it. I should have ironed it. My apologies. It's been in the bag for a hot minute, but yeah, love this one. I cannot wait to have it done. It's very small, so I'm imagining I can get this one done if I make it a focus piece. And I actually stick to my focus piece because that would be the main goal here. So <laughs> that one's going great. I really have been enjoying it. My next whip is my January focus piece and this is almost a finish. So this is my Junebug and Darwin kit, Rosy Chaos. That is the kit. This is a pattern I'm stitching for my sister, Victoria. She is lost in paperbacks on pretty much all of her social media platforms. I am using the Kit Floss, which was all DMCs, and I just put them on floss drops. These are acrylic floss drops that I get off of Amazon. Um, really love them. I've recently purchased, again, another uh, several bundles of 20 because I love them. And I am like literally 15 stitches away from being done, probably <laughs> 15 to 20. So I think I'm gonna pull this one out tonight and finish it. Yay! Isn't that so cute? Can't wait to see it on her wall. I think her walls are kind of in between these shades of green, like these sagey to dark green. Her walls are a shade like that and it's just gonna look so fab. I can't wait. She moved out of state, my sister, and uh, we argue like cats and dogs, but I love her. She's awesome. So <laughs> shout out to my sister. Hope she loves this. I'm going to finish it tonight and get that mailed off to her probably Monday, to be honest. So that was my next whip. And my last whip, which is like Sal's Galore. Is this like my theme of the year? It must be because this is another Sal. This is Ode to Autumn Sal. This is a Sal that is being hosted by... Kelsey Lee and things. I always want to say Kelsey and things. <laughs> Kelsey Lee and things. And this is on a me dyed fabric. So dyed by me, a 28 count, um, or sorry, not 20 count, a 14 count Ada. I think a 14 count Ada. Yes. <laughs> 14 count Ada. And here is where I got to. I know it doesn't look like I got very far, but that is because I made a mistake and I actually had to go back in and um, pick out a bunch of my stitches. So I've restitched a bunch of this pretty much. Sorry, too high up. Let me move you down. So I went in here, completed a lot of the barn, and I think down here is going to be a darker portion of the barn. I pretty much just wanted to get to where I was at the roof line so I could see how my floss showed up. And I feel like it showed up really great. This is a good representation of the color. I used Rit dye and I used the colorways charcoal and navy blue. So you can see the splashes of navy blue, the splashes of charcoal. I really just wanted to go for like a nighttime autumn scene. Uh, I really like this and it's super fun to stitch on. And it's also, I think, going to be a really good easy stitch because it's on the Ada and I don't have very many projects on Ada. And on this one, I have a needle minder that my friend Alexis made me. She is Alexis underscore my amazing world. She has a great channel. Her and her wife are just fabulous. I love them. So yeah, this one is a fun one and I can't wait. Can't wait to get it done. I mean, I know I have so much left to stitch, <laughs> but I just love it. And I have that in a bag that I got off of, oh no, I, I've left it in the screen. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll try to put something over it. <laughs> so this is a bag that I purchased myself off of Amazon. And again, it has a bad word on it. That's why I'm covering it. And I just have all my DMCs in here. There are a couple of, there are a couple of uh, pieces that I'm a little worried about at the bottom. There's these two houses, and I know I mentioned this in my last video, but I'll mention it again just for anyone who is just catching me. I am going to be changing the houses at the bottom to probably be these shades of peachy pink, just so that they show up nicely on the fabric. And I really like this with the mix of the greens and the orange or the pumpkins and whatnot. So I think that'll be really nice. And I've been really enjoying this project. It's just great. Like I said, I'm just, 
I'm so happy with my dye job on these fabrics. This was my first ever attempt at dyeing fabric myself, and I just had a blast. It was so much fun. So that is the last whip that I worked on, and I'm going to go ahead and move into what I have been knitting. So I have been knitting. Yay! <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know, I just wasn't in the mood to knit for quite some time. The main problem was is that my classic sweater, I needed to I needed to cake up another ball of yarn and I just really didn't want to pull out my Swift. I have an Amish Swift, so you know, you got to put the little pegs in and spin it and then, you know, the ball winder. And although it doesn't really take very long to do any of that, for some reason, I just wasn't in the mental space to do it at the end of last year. <laughs> So I put this away for quite some time. Um, I did pull it back out though, and I did move my stitch marker. Yeah, so this is my stitch marker. That's where you guys saw it last. So I did stitch a couple of inches on here, and I also blocked it. I decided to just give it a block uh, because I wanted to see how my stitches looked and mind the wrinkles. But let me tell ya, wow, this yarn, so soft. I mean, amazingly soft. I am very excited to get this sweater done now. Um, I'll probably knit on it for some car knitting. And I mean, look at, look at this. She is fabulous. She is a style icon. Come on. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, really happy with this after blocking. Um, I am just uber excited to get it finished. I love the way my raglan is looking. My raglan increases here. Oh, beautiful. And it's just stunning. The, the fabric that is created with this yarn is magnificent. I love it. I cannot say enough good things because I already thought that this was pretty soft. After blocking, it's amazingly soft. Like, I think that if you were someone who works with mostly superwash, you could definitely use this yarn and not be I don't know, not be itchy or not feel itchy. And I also really enjoy the halo that I got off of the yarn after blocking. Um, I think you can see down here, this is the part that's not blocked. So like from where my fingernail is down is not blocked. And you can really see the difference in the fabric. At least I think you can, <laughs> maybe not because it's white. So it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, this is just stunning. I really, really enjoy this project and I'm excited to get it finished now. Like I'm super excited and I'm happy that I just finally took the time to cake up this ball and I'll probably continue knitting on this the next two weeks or so. I haven't pulled out my half and half triangles wrap. I know I'm super, super close to the finish on that one, but I think with how large it got, I'm kind of disappointed in that. I'm sure I'll change my mind once it's finished and I'll be like obsessed with it, but for now, me. <laughs> um, the next thing I did is I did start a sweater for my daughter, but my gauge was so off. I don't know what it is, but I've actually knit her this exact pattern in the past. I'll put a picture of the pattern here. And, um, it was a really cute sweater, but the yarn I used was one that was a little bit more rustic and she was really young, so she didn't like it. And so pretty much I ended up knitting it just to put it in a, in like a keepsake box. <laughs> so um, that one didn't work. I decided to try to re-knit it and my gauge this time just was so off that I ended up having to unravel it. Totally fine, no big deal. That never has bothered me when it comes to my knitting. I'm not, I'm not one who's like, oh, I put this time into this object, I have to finish it. And like, if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. So I went ahead and unraveled it and I just decided to hold the yarn double and knit a hat. I have a ton of this yarn left. Um, so this is really thick and this is my own beanie pattern. I have it labeled as the simple beanie. So if you go on my Ravelry and you look in my projects, um, you'll see a hat that's just titled simple beanie and in there when you click on it will have my whole hat recipe. So how I get this, this finished object. But um, I pretty much give you the maths on how to adapt your gauge and adapt your, your like size and all that stuff. But I really like this hat. It's super cute. It's very thick. So my husband said he's not going to wear it, but I think that I'll probably use it in February because it gets really cold here in February. So I'm enjoying that. Um, that is all my knitting, but I do have some acquisitions. So I want to say a special shout out to you guys because a couple of people had reached out to me and said that they had this pattern, which was like my unicorn. I could not find it at all in stock. <laughs> a bunch of people kept on sending me the listing on everything cross stitch, but 
The second you click on it, if you look in the actual, like where you click to add it to the cart, it says out of stock. So even though it's on there and listed, it's, it's still out of stock. So thank you for sending it to me, but unfortunately, if you click that, you'll see it's out of stock. But um, a lovely viewer messaged me via email and said that she had this pattern and she gifted it to me. So thank you so much. It got to me safe and sound and I am obsessed. Um, I'll probably have to pop a picture because this is pretty glary and I don't want to open it because they actually staple theirs, the lavender and laces shut. But this is called Oh Christmas Tree and I really, really want this pattern. <laughs> so I am ecstatic to have it. I need to finish kitting it up and um, I think I have a linen in stash that I'll use for this one, but I really enjoy it. So yeah, love that. My next acquisition is from Hollis Hands Creates. I, as you guys know, love this shop. Christine is the shop owner. She's absolutely amazing. Not only is she just, she runs an amazingly well-organized and amazing, great shop, but she's also an amazing human. So I highly recommend using her to purchase and kit up your projects. But I decided to go ahead and get some flannel flower by Fox and Rabbit. Try to get the whole thing in the screen. There we go. And that's a pretty accurate representation of the color. That modeling is fabulous. Is it not? Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like a cool tone yet warm tone. It's just so lovely. I'm really excited. And I did get a 40 count cut. And if you go on um, Christine's site, Hollis Hand Creates site, you'll see that she has like where you just select one cut, two cuts. This is the size if you select two. So it's like a, what is this called? A fat half? Is that what it's called? A fat quarter? Fat quarter. But this is the size if you select two. So really enjoy that. It's just beautiful. I'm not sure what project I'm gonna use it for. Bridgen always says the museum stitcher. She's like my bestie, love her. And she always mentioned that this was her favorite fabric and that she ever found it in stock somewhere again. She'd purchase more of it. And I was like, say no more, Bridgen. I will do what you say. <laughs> and so I went ahead and picked up some of that. And lastly, I'm going to move on to actually a review. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, which is just Megan Babauta, um, then you will know that I have been wanting to try out some new needles. You can also find me on Instagram if you just look up the Seattle Stitcher, you'll see me. But I posted to my story a while ago, and I think I mentioned this, maybe my last video, that I wanted to try some new needles. So the ones that I picked up were my Bowens here, and I picked up my Peacemakers. Um, the needles that I always use are these John James gold needles. I've been using these the entire time I've started cross-stitching, which we've officially hit one year of cross-stitching. I have a picture actually that popped up on my Facebook. It was a memory one year ago. I'll pop it here. One year ago today was my um, my first ever project, was through, which was Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. And I have UFO'd that, but I, I am going to restart it this year. <laughs> so I love my John James, but I kept on hearing that they were very hard to thread. I never felt that they were particularly hard to thread, but I thought, you know, Megan, you should try some new things. You might like them. So I picked up a pack of these Bowens on Amazon and I did get a three pack. So it came with 28s, 24s, and 26s. And I typically use a 26 needle. I really enjoy these. I would say that these are very comparable to the John James in the smoothness of how they go through your linen, through your Ada, through your even weave. You know, I've had an array of fabrics in the past two weeks. So I, it's been a joy to try these on all the different sorts. And I really like them. I would say in my ranking, these rank probably third. These rank third. No, these rank second. These rank second out of all the needles I've ever tried. So I'm really enjoying the Bowens. I really like them. I feel as though they are slightly easier to thread than the John James Gold needles, but um, not as easy as the Peacemakers. Guys, these Peacemakers, I, I'm obsessed. If I could use these for every single project for the rest of my life, I'd be a happy lady. My issue with these is if you're using a very tight weave on like a 40, 46, et cetera, these are a size 26 and they are so easy to thread. That's what makes me love them so much. The problem is I'm hoping I can get this 
you can kind of see how, and it's hard because they're so small, you can kind of see how they come outwards at the eye of the needle. Well, if you have a very tight weave linen, so again, a 40 to a 46, maybe you go up and you're all the way in those 50 counts. Well, that eye being rounded as it is, it leaves like a very distinguishable hole when you push your needle through. And so even though you're not pulling your thread super, super tight or anything like that, it's just leaving a very noticeable hole. And with my other 26 count needles, although they're harder to, th to thread, the eyelet is so small that when you pull it through, it barely leaves any, you know, any noticeable hole in the fabric. Um, if you're an Ada stitcher or an even weave stitcher though, sold. I mean, say no more, go pick some of these up because they are the easiest needle by far to thread. And so I really, really enjoy these, but I'm going to have to put them third just because of the fact that I am typically a linen stitcher and I don't care for the fact that it leaves that very large hole because of the eyelet. I just enjoy how easy they are to thread though. So these I've been using with my a holiday rooster because it's on that 28 count even weave and they're there it's so it's such a you know 28 count is pretty large but it being an even weave makes it even easier to stitch on and then I have these super easy to thread needles so loving that I'm still gonna say that John James are my number one because although they're extremely hard to thread compared to the other two it's the fact that they are so smooth and I like the length of them. You can also find John James Petites, which are even shorter. Might give those a try this year. And outside of that, I, I like that there's no noticeable hole left behind in your linen from using these. So that's my review on those. The last thing that I have to talk to you guys about is my books. So as you guys know, I have been reading The Queens of Conquest with my daughter at night, and that's been really good. Um, I'm still enjoying it. We're only about halfway through on that. But I did finish this book, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRoe, or maybe it's Addie LaRue, but I really enjoyed this. I did give it a five star on Goodreads. I thought about it for a while because there were portions in the middle that I was like, this kind of feels like it's drudging along. And I, I honestly put it down for a couple of days and didn't pick it back up. But when I did pick it back up, I finished it that night. <laughs> so I really, really loved this book. I ended up giving it, like I said, a five star review. Um, I'm going to keep this copy. I do have another copy though. So if anyone wants to read it, let me know. Um, just go ahead and leave in the comments, leave invisible, leave the word invisible in your comments. <laughs> uh, and I'll just do a random number or a random comment picker and I will give away the book because I have a copy of this um, that is the black binding. It's the regular, this is like a special edition binding. I have a regular binding of it. So it is a hardback, but yeah, I'd be more than happy to ship that off to someone so you guys can enjoy it as well. It was just such a good story. It's funny because this was like so out of my wheelhouse from what I usually read that my sister, she gave me the copy that has the black binding. And I was like, can you just tell me what happens? Because I don't know if I'm gonna ever read it. And so I already knew the story, but even then, it was such a good book that it was worth reading, even though I knew the whole plot. So really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. Um, let me know, like I said, leave the word invisible in your comment and I'll pick that next time I, next time I film. So that is all my cross stitching, all my madness, all my sewing, everything guys. It's been a crazy two weeks. I've been doing a lot of stitching and um, thank you to those who joined my live. I did a random live where I was cleaning my bookshelves. I usually clean them about once a year where I completely take everything out and dust and like Lysol and everything. And it was just fun. It was fun sharing my books with you guys and talking about my opinions on them and what I would recommend out of my stash. So it was fun. Thanks for joining me. And a special thank you as well to everyone who's bought me a coffee. I started leaving a buy me a coffee link in my videos a while ago, but I don't really mention it in my, <laughs> in my videos. And a few people now have, um, 
have bought me some coffee, so thank you. If you know me, you'll know that I'm a big coffee drinker. I have an espresso machine at, in my house, so I definitely love me a good latte or a cappuccino. I love it. <laughs> but I've been really loving just going down the street and picking me up a nice iced coffee. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate you guys. And oh, here's to 2023. Ah, I'm excited. <laughs> So I hope you guys have a wonderful next couple of weeks. I'll probably catch you in a live, maybe even later tonight, but um, have a wonderful time. I will see you guys next time. And that's a wrap. Bye. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Oh, I dusted over here but my nose is still killing me. Outside of, what was I saying? I can hear. Fawn? Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. That's a fake eyelash. <laughs> It was stuck to my project. Wow. Wow. I swear I'm a clean person. <laughs>